This is a beginner's introduction to the Silhouette Cameo 3. The Silhouette Cameo uh, is a machine that can cut in two dimensions, many types of paper, some thin cards and some vinyl. The process that we're going to use is drawing in Adobe Illustrator, sending that to the Silhouette Studio software which then sends it to this Silhouette Cameo machine. In conjunction with this video, there is a PDF with notes that you can access on the link below this video. So the way the Silhouette Studio works is that material is fed in from the front. This can be fed in on a mat or else from a row. The material moves back and forth and this gantry moves from left to right. And in that way, the machine is able to cut any 2D pattern so whatever you've drawn on your 2D drawing software can be sent to the machine and that pattern can be cut out. The way it cuts it is with a little knife. So I've got this blade, so I'm going to take out the blade, pull this forward so you can lift out the blade. And this is what's called the auto blade. And the reason it's called the auto blade is it automatically can change and adjust the depth of the blade depending on which material that you are cutting. In there. In underneath here, there are some tools. So this picker tool is used for weeding uh, when after you cut vinyl, and this flat spatula tool is used for peeling off card after you cut card. This device is. Uh, for allowing rolls of material to be fed into the machine. And you can see there are some holes here. These align with the legs of the machine. So if you just lift up the machine and align this, it should fit into the legs in there. And then both units act as one. To turn on the machine, there is an on button on the side here. There is a USB which will connect to whatever device you're using to send uh, your drawing to the machine. So you can use the computer that exists beside the machine or you can bring your own laptop, plug it in with this USB and send the drawings from your own laptop to the vinyl um, There's also a power cable which needs to be plugged in. So, um, to prepare files for the silhouette final cutter. You can use any 2D drawing vector program. We're going to use uh, Adobe Illustrator. <coughs> so <coughs> after opening Adobe Illustrator, go to create new, and we're going to create an A4 file. So um, A4 comes up as one of the defaults here for me. If it doesn't for you, go into print. Um, it should come up there. Um, or you can put in the dimensions on the right hand side here. Please change the units to millimeters. We're always going to use millimeters. And the width of an A4 page is 210 and the height is 297. Then we press create. 
this white area, our, what's called our artboard in Illustrator, is the area that we're going to draw on. I'm going to pick up uh, the rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. So if I click once, it'll give me a dialog box that will allow me to put in measurements. <clears throat> and I'm going to put in a width of 150 and a height of 50. Then I'm going to draw another rectangle. Um, offset a little bit from the original rectangle. At the minute, both of these are black. <clears throat> the lines are black and the areas are white around them. If I select the rectangle, over here I can see on the left hand side, I can see that there is a fill of white and the stroke, which is the line on the outside, is black. So I'm going to click on the fill and I'm going to click no fill. And I'm going to click on the stroke and I have some colors here that I can add. If you don't have these colors or any of the, the dialog boxes that I have here, <clears throat> you can switch them on by going to window and then switching any of these on. So for example, um, the particular box of colors I have there is the art and illustration colors. To get them open, we go into um, swatch libraries. Go in window, down to swatch libraries, default swatches and art and illustration, or sometimes they're called basic RGB. So art and illustration. Now as we turn it off, now I'm going to turn it back on again. Down to swatch libraries, default swatches, art and illustration. So <clears throat> I'm going to make this line a red line. I'm actually going to make the first line a blue line. So the machine will, what I'm planning to do is have the machine do a score along this line and then do a cut along the red line. And I'm going to put in some text also. So if I go over to my text tool, click and drag, I can create text. I'm going to write LSAD for Limerick School of Art and Design. For the machine to be able to read the text, you must create outlines. So at the minute it's still editable text. If I click in, I can go backspace or I can add in a letter. <clears throat> what you need to do is use your black selection tool. Then right click on the text box and press create outlines. And now these have become shapes rather than being editable text. So they're shapes just like any other shape that we had, like the rectangles. They have a fill and a stroke that can be changed. I'm going to adjust the size of them by using the toggles on the corner and holding down shift each time so it stays in proportion. And then I'm going to turn off the, the fill. So if I click on fill and turn it off, and again for the stroke, I'm going to click red because it's going to cut these lines. So at the minute, <clears throat> the, the machine would uh, engrave or score this um, blue line, then cut the red lines. And that's the file nearly ready to send. But what we need to do is we also need to draw a rectangle right around the outside of our A4 page. Um, and the reason for this is that when we bring the drawing from Illustrator, into the software for the machine, it will randomly scale, and we want to be able to scale it down back to the correct size. So if we know the size of this rectangle, which is 210 by 297, we can scale the entire drawing to uh, back to its original size. So to save the file um, for uh, the vinyl cutter, what we need to do is go to File, Export, export as, and the file type that we're going to export as is a .dxf. So if I go down to the bottom here, we will choose AutoCAD Interchange DXF file. I'm going to give it a name, LSAD test. And for the moment, I'm just going to save that onto my desktop. 
all the default settings are okay, then press okay. Says the file sent from Illustrator. To load paper into the machine, we use a cutting mat. There is a protective layer on the cutting mat, which we can peel off. And in underneath, there's a, a sticky layer, which the material will stick to. There are several types of cutting mats, so different sizes, but also the tackness or the, the stickiness uh, can vary from mat to mat. So for example, today we're cutting with light card, 160 GSM, so we're going to use a, a light tack cutting mat. There are other cutting mats, uh, there's a medium tack one and for example this one is a high tack cutting mat and it says in the bottom left hand corner high tack. To load our paper onto the cutting mat, place the mat on the table and load, press the paper along the grid lines to the left and to the top and the top is indicated by the arrow. This mat is a 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter mat or 12 inches by 12 inches which is what it's called in the software. To load the mat and the material I push my mat up against the rollers. The edge of my mat runs along the blue line on the left hand side here and I then making sure that there's a roller on either side of the mat I then press load and the machine will take the material in and now it's ready for sending our drawing to to send the file to the machine we will use a software which is proprietary to this machine. It's called Silhouette Studio. To uh, install the software, um, you can just download it from free from the, their website, which is silhouetteamerica.com. In this software, you can draw things from scratch, but we don't need to do that as we've already made our drawing in Illustrator. Um, the first tab that we're going to start with here is the design tab. So up on the top here, on the right hand corner, we have design, store, library and send. We're going to start with design. And then we have a load of icons along the right hand side here. The top one, which is called page setup, is what we're going to start with. So <clears throat> we're going to use a cutting mat to cut the card. Uh, the A4 sheet of card and the standard cutting mat we're going to use is the 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat. The media size, so the size of our um, material is A4, so that is already picked there at 210 by 297. If it was a different size, you can change it here. That is our page fully set up now. So we will close that. Now we're going to import our drawing. So if we go to file and open, and we saved our file onto the desktop, and it's called LSAD test, GXF, and OK. Now, this file originally was the full size of an A4 sheet, but now it has randomly scaled to an incorrect size. You can see that this rectangle on the outside should be going around the outside of our A4 page. So this is a, an issue that happens when importing files into the software. So to be able to correct this issue, we are going to rescale it. So first of all, we're going to right click on it and we're going to group it. Then we're going to go over to the right hand side here where we're going to pick this tool called the transform panel. And inside the transform panel, there is a tool at the top here, this arrow called the scale tool. So we open up the scale tool. Now I will click and drag over my all my drawing. And then here we have the dimensions of that drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock 
this little padlock, which means that when I change the width, the height will also change. And I know that the width should be 210, so I'm going to type in 210 and press enter, and it automatically changes the height also. So now you can see that our rectangle around the outside um, is the exact size of the page, which is 297 by 210. So now it's all the correct size. What I'm going to do now, I'm finished with the transform tool. I'm going to right click on it and ungroup. And then I'm going to delete this line around the outside. So click on it and press delete or backspace on your keyboard because we don't need that anymore. We don't actually want to cut that line. That was just to help us scale. So what I'm left with is the red lines and the blue lines, which are going to be cut and they're going to be scored. So if I'm now finished in the design tab and I'm going to go into the send tab, so at the very top right hand corner, the send tab. And in here I can pick my material and I can set some settings um, to be able to send to the machine. So the way we've prepared our drawing is through the line method. So I'm going to go into the line. And here you can see that two layers come up, the red layer and the blue layer. Um, I'm going to drag the blue layer up to the top or drag the layer, the red layer underneath um, because we want to do the engraving before we do the cutting. So we'll do the blue first, so the blue should be on top and the, the red underneath. Um, for the first layer, the blue layer, so we are going to pick the correct material and we're going to be using 160 GSM card. So I know that I have that down near the bottom here. 160 GSM multicolored card from Silks is what we're picking there. And that is going to be a cut. That is going to be a score. So it's like a fold line. Then the next layer is also 160 GSM card. And it's going to be a cut line. The tool that we're using is the auto blade tool. Just double check about that. Yep, auto blade. That's what's fitted to the machine. So at this stage, um, Everything is ready to send to the machine. All the settings for that card are already set up. So in terms of um, the force and the speed that the machine needs to um, work at has already been set up for that material because I have tested that material and I've set up those settings. I will show you how to set up uh, materials in a separate video. Um, at this stage, if I was connected to the machine, uh, it would see the machine is available. And then finally, we would press send and it sends to the machine. Once we have sent the drawing to the machine, the machine automatically changes the depth of the blade depending on the material that we have picked. The machine first will do the engrave or the score line. It will change the depth of the blade again. And then it continues to do all of the cut lines. Once the machine is finished, on the screen on the right hand side, you can press continue and then you can press unload to unload the material.
The material, in this case 160 GSM card, can be peeled off or if there's more intricate parts or it's difficult to remove, you can use the spatula tool to place it underneath the card and remove it. So for example, one of the pieces and then we have the individual letters cut and I can peel any of these parts off quite easily. To load vinyl paper, we have this device that is fixed to the front of the machine. We sit our vinyl roll into it, push the right hand side over so that the vinyl fits in nice and easily. Then we take our vinyl and we push it through this slot and pull it out the other side. Then we push the vinyl up against the rollers on the machine. Now there's a roller on this side and a roller on this side that take the, the vinyl and push it back and forth through the machine. The, uh, currently the one on the right hand side is too far in this direction so we need to move it across and to be able to do that we lift this, push this lever down so it lifts the bar up then we can take this and there's a lock and unlock symbol on it turn it to unlock and we can move it across make sure it's on the vinyl now and then I will lock it so the left hand side of my vinyl should be running along the blue line on the left hand side and both rollers should be on the vinyl so I'm going to push this bar back down again push my vinyl up against it and when the machine is on you get on the screen here a button that says load so we press this load button and it can take the vinyl into the machine the touch screen is not very sensitive so press hard and it should work now we're going to send the same drawing to the vinyl cutter again but we're going to cut it in vinyl rather than paper um, we have a couple of settings we need to change in the design tab. So if we go back into our page setup, within here, uh, originally we had said that there was a cutting mat 12 inches by 12 inches. For the vinyl, we're not going to be using a cutting mat, so we say none. And then the material that we're using for the vinyl is 300 millimeters wide. So I'm going to make a custom size 300 by 300. And now um, the page is set up for vinyl. Close my page setup. I don't need to scale anything this time because it's the same drawing and it's already at the correct scale. Then I will go into the send tab. And this time we're not using 160 GSM card, we're going to be using vinyl. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to use this vinyl, which is vinyl MDP supplies. That's the vinyl I'm using. I put that into both, both layers. And with vinyl, we never do a, a score line. It doesn't make sense to do a score line. It's always cut. So on both the layers, we're going to have cut rather than score. So it's going to cut the blue line. It's going to cut all the red lines also. We need to make sure that the, the tool is the correct tool, the auto blade tool. And then again, when I'm connected to the machine, it'll say available here, and then I just click send.
Once the vinyl is finished cutting, you press continue on the screen and then an option for unload. You press unload and it unloads the vinyl. So after unloading the vinyl, we need to cut off the part that we want. On the rear of the vinyl, there are lines that we can follow to keep our cut quite straight. I'm just cutting it with a pair of scissors. Then we need to do a process which is called weeding, where we take out the parts that we don't want and we leave the parts that we do want. So we're going to use this tool, the one with the spike on it, to do that process. So I'm going to first of all get rid of all the material around the edge that I don't want. So I lift it up and I peel it off. I then <clears throat> will get rid of this interior part which will reveal a border and the letters that we want. And finally, I will remove the center of the letters. This is the graphic that I would like to transfer onto something. This may be transferred onto a wall for an exhibition or it could be, for example, used as a template or a, a stencil. But to be able to transfer this accurately so that all the measurements between all of the different parts stay the same, we use what's called transfer tape. So this tape. So I'm going to peel off a section of this tape and just use my scissors to cut it. And then I'm going to lay this tape on top of the vinyl and I'm going to make sure that it's stuck correctly to the vinyl by pressing with my fingers on each part of the graphic that I've created. There are many different types of vinyl. There's matte vinyl, there's uh, shiny vinyl um, and there is vinyl for many different applications. So for example it could be for interior in an exhibition or it could be exterior on, uh, on a facade of a building. So there are vinyls that are um, temporary and vinyls that are permanent. And depending on which vinyl you require, that will also change the tape that you're going to use. So some tapes are quite sticky and are used for interior or exterior vinyls and some are not so sticky. And here we are removing the graphic. And now this graphic <coughs> can be placed wherever you plan to place it. <coughs> so for example, we place it onto this paper. I will press down on the final part of it. And then I can remove my transfer tape. And the graphic should stick to the background.